And here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this particular Zoom call with David Beavers and Leah Sheeter and about 10 of you sitting in the audience by invitation only. Let me tell you a little about Leah, how I know her. I've not met her personally, in person, up close, but I will in about three weeks at the leadership conference in Indianapolis. But Leah and I have become close because we've spent about 12 Wednesday mornings together uh, working through this amazing Brave Leaders Plus course featuring Brene Brown. And we plumb the depths and uh, really looking into some things. I'm hoping that each of you on the call tonight will at some point have the opportunity to be a part of that course that, the, that is offered by the Juice Plus company. Uh, but we, we had a great time together and learned a lot, but I particularly appreciated Leah's uh, comments. Um, you know, she's younger, I think. I don't know. I'm not going to, I guess it's okay to ask you how old you are. How old are you, Leah? 33. 33. Well, see, my, my baby, my youngest child is 37. So Leah is actually closer to, to being one of my grandchildren. I'm not true. That's not really true. But uh, she's just got a lot of wisdom and a great heart, and she loves her team. And uh, let me just tell you a little bit about her. I'm just going to read this for you. Leah is a mom, and uh, maybe one of the reasons she uh, kind of st struck my heart is that she's the wife of a pastor. And she and her husband reside in Orlando, Florida. Her husband's name is Damien. Uh, is that, did I pronounce that correct? Yes. Okay, that's an interesting name. Yeah, right? <laughs> Given all the movies and so forth. And they're three <laughs> girls. They have three daughters, Olivia, Scarlett, and Adeline. Boy, you've got some great credentials here. Uh, Leah earned a bachelor's degree in interior design and a master's degree from uh, uh, Covenant Seminary. That's in uh, St. Louis, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has instilled a lot of creativity in her, and you can just tell by looking at her, she's looks like an artist. So um, Leah's been a member of the Juice Plus community. Somebody, let's see if I need to uh, make sure everybody's muted here. Mute all. Now let's see. Let's see. Can See if you can. All right, I'm going to unmute. I think you're muted now, David. Okay, that's we got it. Okay. Another another one of my uh, technological whizzes being recorded here. So we'll go back to the speaker view and uh, get rid of this. Um, Leah's gonna just, she's passionate about a lot of things, but she's gonna just talk to us tonight about why she loves this business. She's been with Juice Plus for nine years. She is a national marketing director, guys. This is just amazing. 33 years old, mother of three, pastor's wife. I can't even imagine how you do the business ladies with children, much less uh, all the other things that go on in your life. Leah, we we're so glad to have you, and we want you to take 20 minutes to just share, and as time allows, we'll unmute everybody briefly and let them ask any questions you may have. So welcome to the call. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I really love conversational opportunities, and clearly you're all muted, and that's not going to happen tonight. So um, I... I'm really excited to get to share um, something really near and dear to my heart with you tonight. And I am just going to kind of jump right in because this is what I want to share with you is what I call life on purpose. And the reason that I call it that is um, will become clear as I share a little bit more about how this fits into my personal story. But this was actually um, something that came about in large part because of this Juice Plus journey, but really it's been interwoven into my entire life. And any of us who've been around for a while know that the things that surface in our lives through this business really impact every part of our lives. So this has just been um, a really, really, really big part of it for me and actually something I hear from my team about a lot as well. So 
the question of um, the, to the topic at hand tonight about life on purpose is, you know, what, what really is that? And I think a lot of times people think work-life balance maybe. And I really don't like that term because I don't know that I want to have balance in work, whatever people consider work in life, because balance is the even distribution of something. And most of the time, the things that are valuable in our lives, we're not necessarily evenly distributing those things. And so, or nor do we want to do that because certain things are more important than others. And so um, for me and the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to define life on purpose as an individual's time, energy, and resources spent proportionally on the things that matter most to them. And the reason that I think this topic is so important is this kind of key question that I hear a lot and really that echoed in my mind and heart for um, quite some time in my business, which was, can I be successful? Can I win in my business goals and also maintain other life values? And if that is possible, then how do I do it? Um, and I, I just hear this question a lot stirring in people in my team, and it was a big part of my personal story. So before we dig into it, I want to share someone else's story that I think we'll all relate to. And we've all at least heard of this person before, but I think there's some things we can take away from her um, journey that are very, very relevant to this. And it's Harriet Tubman. Um, and she's a well-known history hero. She was a slave in the mid 1800s and through her determination and just her deep rooted longing for freedom, she escaped slavery and left her entire family behind but she wasn't interested in just her own freedom. And if she was, honestly, we probably wouldn't even be talking about her today and honestly probably wouldn't even know who she is. But she was interested in freedom for all. And that's what we learned through her story because over the course of the next eight years of her life, she made multiple trips back to the South and ended up saving 300 men, women, and children from slavery. But the thing that I think is really important in this um, context to take away from her story is that freedom began in her imagination. She didn't know what freedom was like. She'd never experienced it before, but she committed herself to a cause that required focus, determination, risk, courage, and resilience. And it wasn't just for the sake of her own freedom, but freedom for 300 other people plus many, many more because it really was the beginning of a huge movement that ended up freeing many. So life on purpose for her truly was a wholehearted pursuit of something she believed in, but it was not, and this is the key, I think, it was not at the cost of her values, um, but it was, you know, well, let me rephrase that. She pursued something wholeheartedly, but it wasn't at the cost of her values or the people that she loved. It was for the sake of what she valued and the people that she loved. And I think sometimes we think those things are at odds. If we pursue something wholeheartedly, it has to be at the cost of the things we value or the people that we love. And that doesn't have to be the case. So um, if you're not lifing on purpose, if you will, what, what are we doing? I don't think any of us would say we're lifing on accident, but that is, there's always a trajectory in our lives. There's, there's really never a neutral. We're either moving forward or, or we're going the opposite direction. There's always some sort of trajectory. And sometimes it feels we sense that direction stronger than others. And so I think this is why it's so important for us to be intentional about this topic in our lives, because we're headed in some direction and we want to be intentional about what direction that is. And life on purpose doesn't necessarily mean that you have, you're a busy person and you have a full calendar. I mean, it could mean for sure that you have a full calendar, but busy doesn't necessarily equal productivity. And it also doesn't necessarily equal purposeful. So a little bit about my story. When I, I came upon Juice Plus, um, when I had some health issues about nine years ago, and I was 24 years old, really quickly became concerned about my future, particularly about my health. And I really had become convinced that fruits and vegetables were the answer, but I didn't know how to get enough of them every day. And this amazing woman who was a total stranger to me at the time ended up sharing Juice Plus with me. and 
yes, Juice Plus absolutely transformed our family's health. I mean, I, I'm not sure that these three children would be here today if I had not started that journey nine years ago and a myriad of other health transformations. But even more, and more so what I didn't expect was the fact that the business has changed the trajectory of our family's future and our legacy. And really pretty early on in my business, I was earning a second stream of income that was sufficient enough for me to be able to stay home when we had our first daughter. And that really was kind of my first dream, if you will, to be able to leave the corporate world. And so for the next five years, I really kind of stayed in the same, I was engaged in my business, but I really sort of stayed in the same place and felt like I wasn't truly moving forward. And I think looking back, what had happened was I had gained what I thought I always wanted, which was to be able to be a stay at home mom but I had unknowingly lost clarity about what I could achieve beyond that or um, not only for my family, but for other people as well. And there came a point in time, we, our families had three cross country moves since we've been in the business. So started in St. Louis, then San Diego, and now Orlando. And each time we moved, we had a six month old. So uh, this has been our first six month old that we haven't moved. And I'm like really excited about that. But there came a point in time where I really found myself at a crossroads in my business and I really needed, um, a, I think, just a deeper rooted sense of assurance that um, if I committed myself to this mission, that I would be able to gain the level of time and financial freedom that we, desi we desired as a family while still upholding the things that I valued most, like being a present mom and wife, and those were the reasons I wanted to do the business in the first place. So I don't know if any of you can relate to that, but just this sense of like, I want, like I do want to move forward, but am I going to be able to do that and still be true to who I desire to be for my family and these other people that I love and value in my life? So as I began to experience this beautiful reality of how this business really could be an interwoven part of our family life, I really began to see, gain clarity, if you will, about the best way that I could make my unique contribution in the world and how this business could be a vehicle for that and help other people do the same. And so in the last three and a half years, our team went from SC to NMD and grew over 300% in that period of time. And so a lot of the realities that brought that about are what I want to share um, a little bit about with you guys tonight. So one of the pieces that I just want to lay the groundwork from for right at the beginning is this reality of our, the, our life. Our lives are, we are whole people, but we don't live our lives in that way. A lot of times, I don't know if you guys can relate to that. I think most people can. I know for me, a lot of times I have less of a tendency to do it now, but I know that there's still aspects of my life where I live compartmentalized, where I kind of treat everything like it's in a box on a shelf. And, you know, I'm, when I'm in doing my family thing, that's here. And my juice plus thing is over here and church thing is over here. And so things don't often um, interweave with one another. And that's just not reality. And when you think about, um, you know, your body, for instance, your body is one entire, you know, it's one whole, it has categorized systems that make up the whole but all the systems are inter interwoven. They all work together. They cannot be, you know, sealed off from one another um, in order to work in the way that it was created to work. Whereas um, if you think of compartments, true compartments, they are sealed off from each other. And I think that the way this relates to our lives is sometimes there's this misconception that in the world that you can't pursue more than one thing in your life wholeheartedly. And if you live in compartments, I would say then that's probably true because you can't be really in more than one compartment at one time. But if we live as an integrated whole, we can, I really see this reality of how we can pursue things that we choose to wholeheartedly because every category can be interconnected. And when one area is moving forward, everything can be moving forward. Um, there can be a wholehearted pursuit that matters for every ambition that we have. And, and that's what I began to realize in my story was that these 
you know, other aspects of my life that I just, who I was created to be that matter to me as I committed to each of those pieces of the whole, the whole was moving forward. And that's when my business really started gaining a lot of traction. And so I think one example practically that I could give you is I used to feel kind of guilty about um, working my business with my family around um, or feeling like, well, this is just my thing and I need to try to do it whenever we don't have like, you know, our thing going on. And that's a little challenging as a stay at home mom when you're pretty much surrounded by your family all the time. Right. So I think what the shift that happened for me was realizing that this doesn't have to be separate from my family. This should be my family because of the way this franchise is created. My family can be a part of it in a lot of ways. We can, we can, you know, brainstorm together. We can dream together. We can talk about goals together. Um, when we were moving to NMD, it was, um, it was truly a family effort in so many ways, but everybody was bought in. Everybody was like, okay, this is my role. And you know, my daughters, I have a six, four and one year old. So, well, the one year old was born the month that we hit NMD. So I had a, you know, six and four year old at that point in time. And so I would talk to them about, you know, when, when you let other people borrow mommy, when I'm on zoom, you're helping them get healthier. You're helping other kids get more time with their mommies and daddies. Um, we would, I would talk to my oldest about getting to hold the plaque and she would she would practice that and she would imagine what it was going to be like on stage. And they were just so excited. And still a year later, just they hear the song when we were on stage and they'll say, that reminds me when we were on stage. It's so fun when mommy hits her goals. Cause then we get to do X, Y, Z. So it's fun to see how they get to own it and they pray for it. Like they pray for people on the, our team and they pray for the team and, and that to me is a beautiful thing because it gets to be something that we're all excited about and everybody can take um, ownership over. So um, it really is more than actions though, even though life on purpose sounds like just something you do. We once again are whole people and the simple way I like to look at that is head, heart and hands. And so your, the head aspect of this that I want to highlight is getting clear about what you want. And I like this quote by Simon Sinek, success is like what reality looks like in your imagination. So when reality looks like what's in your imagination, if you think back to Harriet Tubman, she had to imagine freedom and commit herself to something she'd never, ever experienced before in order to make it become a reality. And so a lot of times we do have a tendency to think more about what we don't want to happen than what we do want. And, you know, really life is about 10% what happens to you and 90% how you deal with it. And so we know how critical the mindset piece is and we, it's important for us to train our minds to think of what we want. And so I'm not going to take time to do this right now. These dates are from a previous presentation I did back in the summer, but I do encourage each of you to think like we have a week left in this business month and a lot can still happen what are you wanting to see happen? Um, and do you know how clear it is or does your mind more so go to what you don't want to happen? And so think about that and think about where you want to be by the next conference. It's already time to be thinking about that. The people that you want to impact, um, what you want to see, you know, your own business do or people, you know, your team, the impact that you want to see your team make and just really make those pictures extremely clear because our imagination is one of the most powerful things we've been given. So the heart aspect of this is what is valuable to you. And I think here, um, what I would say is what, what you value um, is you're going to, this is what you deem worthy. These are the things that um, you know, you would say you're worthy to invest your time and your resources in which your resources are lots of things, time, energy, money. And some examples of this would be, you know, your marriage, your faith, your kids, your business, friends. So this is another exercise I'd encourage you to do is just a quick brainstorm, like give yourself, you know, one or two minutes. And what are the top three to five things you would say are the buckets you would consider most valuable to you. And after you do that, consider 
Um, these are my three V's just to try to help you remember. So number one, what's valuable to you. Number two, volition that you get to choose. We get to choose what's valuable to us. Not everybody has, um, I mean, everybody can choose what they value, but not everybody has the freedom like we do to invest in things that we value. So it's our responsibility to steward the choice that we have. And so be intentional with that choice. And three, the vehicle, these are the things that get you there. And so in other words, this is, um, I think a really, really key part. And the reason is because you may do that exercise that we just looked at where you write your three to five and your juice plus business may not be in your three to five. And I think sometimes people feel guilty. Like, well, what does that mean? Like, maybe I'm just not committed enough to make this, um, to be like truly successful in this. And what I would say is, you know, most often your juice plus business is a vehicle. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be in your three to five things you value and want to commit your time to, but what it can be is a vehicle that helps you get to more of what you value. And I think that that is a really, really important differentiator. I'm just going to leave that and let, let you guys think on that. Cause that is a huge, huge conversation that I have with a lot of people on my team. And that really, I have had to sort through a lot myself. So you can do anything, but not everything. And this is really important reality to living life on purpose. I used to be one of those yes people that would fill my plate to the brim. And I thought that like gave me identity to just constantly have a gazillion things going on where I'm like barely like my head's barely above water. And if I ever felt like I wasn't almost drowning, I almost felt like I lost some of my identity and I'm like, there's something really wrong with that. So um, we've got to, this is another part of being intentional and doing well and, and stewarding well, the things that we choose to invest our time in. And I'm just going to show a really short clip here. Um, some of you may or may not have seen wonder woman, but pay attention to what her response is whenever she's faced with a decision to either follow a time schedule that her friends had laid out for the mission that they were on or respond to the need at hand. This is no man's land, Diana. It means no man can cross it, all right? This battalion has been here for nearly a year and they, they barely gained an inch, all right? Because on the other side, there's every square inch of this place. This is so what? So we Oh, we, do, we are doing something. We are. We just, we can't save everyone in this war. It's not what we came here to do. No, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's a cliffhanger. Normally I would let you see more, but I am not going to for the sake of time, but she basically just freaking owns the like entire, uh, army that she was facing. So I think the important piece here is, um, sometimes we think that in order to be valuable, we have to always be able to say yes, or that's what a good leader is. And that is absolutely not the case. Even a superhero couldn't say yes, um, to every, every demand or every request. And she had to say and have intentional no's. So this is where I just encourage people to really think about what resolve means to you. What firm course of action have you chosen in your life? I think I came to a point in my life where I thought, you know, I'm, I've always been a pretty intentional person, but I just realized like if I'm half-heartedly, you know, 
committed to my juice plus business, then I'm pretty much going to continue to just sort of stay in the same place and have confusion about where I, how much time I should put into like the gazillion buckets I have going on in my life. And so I, I really asked myself, you know, where could I build a legacy of, of multiplying leaders? And this was really one of the most amazing vehicles I felt like the Lord had brought into my life to be able to do that. So I wanted to figure out how can I make, how can I make that work in a way that fits who I uniquely am? And so this quote I want to share with you, and I really want you to think about the value of the fact that, you know, people that Harriet Tubman led out of slavery, um, they faced horrendously terrifying things that made them want to go back to slavery. You know, freedom was right in front of them. And they were tempted to turn back around and go to slavery because of how terrifying it was to face the things they had to face in order to get to freedom. And so even though our threat isn't necessarily physical in nature, we face things constantly in this journey that are, you know, really trying to drive us the other direction. And I think that this can be so translatable to what we experience on our journey um, as we move forward with courage to the things that we're resolved to do in this mission, not only for our family, but for the sake of other people too. And this is what she said. She told them, if you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. If there is shouting after you, keep going. Don't ever stop, keep going. If you want a taste of freedom, keep going. And I think we have to remind ourselves to keep going because there will always be times where it seems scarier to pursue the things that we believe so deeply are worthy of pursuit. It's scarier sometimes to do that than it would be to turn around and, you know, to live in complacency or to live in mediocrity or something that we feel like is less than what we were truly created for. So I'm just going to end with this quote. Everybody who loves freedom loves Harriet Tubman because she was determined not only to be free, but to make free as many people as she could. And I think that's, that's the important part of what we get to do is that it's not just about us. It's not just about our story. Every single decision that you make to take a step forward and to keep going is going to translate to somebody else that is going to have the opportunity to get to do the same because you chose to do that. So screen down. Thank Leah. I just, uh, it's tremendous. I, I want to just highlight a couple of things and I'm going to unmute everybody so they can uh, maybe ask some questions, unmute all. Uh, but I, I want to just say thank you for your wisdom beyond your years. I love what you almost started developing and you told us to kind of go with it this thing about value versus vehicle. And I've wrestled with that the whole 30 years I've been with this company. Can't believe I started when you were three years old. (laughs) Uh, But uh, the idea is that that I don't have to compromise or shrink my values, but I do look at Juice Plus as a vehicle that lets me do my thing long-term. Once I get clear on what my thing is, then I let Juice Plus be the vehicle that takes me there. And there's no, there, then there's no conflict between my values. Juice Plus is the car. It's the, the transport thing. It's not, it's not the be-all, end-all. It's not my highest value. It is the vehicle. Is that, is that what you're trying to say about that? Yes, exactly. Bit? Very mm-hmm. important to say that. And then the other piece was, too, um, there's, there's no getting anywhere without intentionality and focus. And uh, I'm curious, when, what, what did you think? something shifted and you became intentional and you said, I'm going to be a national marketing director. Can you kind of give it, give, kind of give us a little insight into that defining moment? What, what, what happened in your head and your heart? Yeah, I was a, an SC for five and a half years. And when that happened, I actually was really close to kind of walking away from my business. Okay. Um, not totally. I mean, I was like, I'll keep my customers. I'll always consume juice plus yada, yada, yada. But I just, for me, it was 
like major prayer because I had struggled for years to have a deep why. Like I just was like, people would talk about having a deep why. And I'm like, I, how do I get to that? Like I do all the exercises and I just like, I don't know if part of it was because I just hadn't understood for myself what I wanted or what I desired or what I was, you know, more of what I was created for in life. But I was just praying that I would get clarity about what, what my why in life even was. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather passed away at the age of 95 and he left a huge legacy in my life. And that really got me contemplating, like, what do I want to leave on this earth? Like, what do I want people to say about me when I'm not here anymore? Mm -hmm. And, um, it gives me chills to think about it because that's when I really started. Um, it wasn't, I want to be an NMD, even though I, I knew that was probably where it was. That was, that was where it was going to head head. Not probably, but for me, it was a shift of, I see this business as a vehicle to make, to have a lot of fun, have a huge impact and bring a lot of people along with me and create a movement like of, of, thousands of people. And that's what I got excited about. It was, it wasn't a promotion or anything like that. And then literally after five and a half years of being an SC, two months later, we were SSC. And then a year later, Q and a year later, NMD. That's the the focus changed, didn't it? Once Mm -hmm. you made the shift. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a minute. I'm going to change this to a gallery view. And I don't know, you may not have any question, but I'd love for any of you just to maybe share your big takeaway from this or a question or anything that's on your mind right now. I have something, David. Um, maybe. Hey, this is Abigail. Um, and it, yeah, it kind of, it makes me feel a little bit better, Leah, knowing that you were like at SD for a little bit. Cause I just feel like I've like plateaued from where I'm at. Um, and I know David and I have been working closely together, but I feel like I get, like, I know my why and I get this momentum going and, like try to bring people along with me and just, I I feel like I'm not getting a response from people like that either believe in the product or want to do this business with me. And the people that have joined my team, I just feel like they're not catching on to it. You know what I mean? So I just, I feel like I'm still waiting for, I don't know, people to like come alongside and like really respond in this with me. I just feel like alone sometimes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know. So I feel like I, yeah, like I'm trying all this stuff and then I haven't gotten those right people, I guess, on my team that want the same things or push through when things, when times get hard, you know, like they have goals in the beginning and then fizzle out or. Got any any wisdom for Leah? Well, I, the first things that came to my mind were um, if you're a praying person, I started praying really specifically about who, the people that the types of people I wanted on my team, mm-hmm. um, because I can resonate. I was starting to feel alone, felt like I was kind of carrying the, all the weight myself. And I was just really, um, I pray about a lot of things in my life, but I just, for some reason was never super intentional about praying for the specific things I desired to see happen in my business. So I intentionally did that. And, um, I just, I think for me, a lot of it was growing more courageous to, to reach out to people that I wouldn't have in the past. And, um, part of that for me was social media, literally like three and a half years ago, nobody would have known I had, I was doing this. I've been doing it for five years. I never a single, like a post about anything, you know, that I was doing or my lifestyle that they would even known I was doing anything. So part of that for me was growing in, um, my personal belief in myself and what I'm doing, like this business, my belief in the business and the, you know, industry, if you will. And that increased my courage. One of the thoughts that went through my mind was, okay, So I am holding myself back from sharing openly about something that's actually one of the biggest, like, it's a huge passion in my life. It's some, it's a big part of my life. Right. And I'm holding back because of like these abstract thoughts of people's perception of me. And I'm like, not a single one of those people care anything about what my life does in five or 10 years from now or the legacy that I leave. Only I care about that. So I just was like, I'm going to share what I have because I'm the one that cares most about where I am five years from now, not those people. 
So yeah, those were some of the things that were a shift for me. It was, it was personal continuing to work on myself Mm -hmm. and, um, so that I could have a broader reach of people. How how did you work on, how did you work on yourself, Leah? Let's talk about that a second. How did you get intentional about your development? Yeah. So for me, I really, um, got intentional about, uh, investing in things that I knew would help me grow in my mindset. So there's various tools out there that you can use to grow in your mindset, you know, and find something that works for you and stick to it. And so, um, really working on mindset, um, you know, being consistent about getting, you know, in the word for me and in scripture and prayer, that was a lot of, and and counseling, like I am a big believer in in good, good counselors. And so just understanding myself more and growing, um, and healing in areas that I need to heal and growing as a person, those were huge for me. Um, so I would say those things because I, I had probably been rehashing the same people for quite a while. And then I did like a 90 day period where I reached out to two or 300 people and that like created the momentum that generated a lot of what's happened. I think what you just said there, everybody on this call, at some point you will have, you will discover there will be times where you need to to create a, a, a window of time of say 90 days, Leah. Right. Where, where it's sort of, you don't, you can't do this forever. You won't do it that often, but periodically there needs to be that place where you do all out massive action for 90 days. And that creates the momentum. You already have the skills, but sometimes you just need to create the critical mass of talking to lots of people. Anybody else have a, a takeaway that said an aha moment in Leah's presentation or anything that you want to add? Question. Take a couple of more if there's anybody that wants to say anything. What's on your mind, Jessica? I really like, oh, sorry. Did oh, I go know? ahead. It was that. I'm really good at interrupting. Tammy will tell you that. No, um, I, I didn't see you talk. Go ahead, Sean. Um, I really loved and had like kind of an aha moment when you talked about like the whole, like we're a whole person and we can't comp- like compartmentalize our lives. And like I too have moved a lot recently. And so meeting new people in different places and I moved here in October to San Antonio and started my business in November, like really not knowing anyone. Right. And so I still seem to compartmentalize like family time. Okay, here's my PTA friends. Really haven't shared with them still yet, you know, because you don't want to be that new girl that walks in and just like, hey. Um, So like, I love how you shared that and about how it's we work as a whole system, like, and don't do that. We work better as a person and I need to work on that myself. So thank you for sharing that and just like giving me that aha moment. I appreciate it. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like this all out, like just throwing up on people either. You know what I mean? It's just sharing your life and what do you do? You know? So thanks. Absolutely. Yeah, because David and I talked about that a little bit, too, because I just moved somewhere, Shoni, like two months ago, and I was like, I'm meeting all these new people, but I don't want the first things to be like, come come to my party and sign up for Juice Plus. So I was like, like, there's so much opportunity to share, but like, I feel like I need to build the relationship first and and then like drip little bits here and there. But yeah, I totally get it because you're, you don't want to be them to be like, oh, here's this crazy like lady that's coming. (laughs) The crazy veggie crack girl. <laughs> Any comments on those girls or do you just want to commit them to something or do you, you know, they're okay. Uh, <laughs> anybody else? There's hey, someone hey. over here on the left with the light behind them. I think they're in the witness protection program. <laughs> um, over here. I don't know who this is, right? Oh, it's Blair. Hi, Blair. Okay. <laughs> oh, the light behind me is bad. No, it's not bad. It's just I get a silhouette of you. So oh, you sorry. just project your voice differently. You will think you're, you're not you. Okay. Uh, anything from you, Laura? Any questions? Any Jessica? 
Yeah, yeah. I've, got a, I've got a question. Um, so Leah, I would love to know what, or if you've got any suggestions on organization. Um, I feel like a lot of time there is material and recordings of Zoom calls, um, you know, different videos, et cetera. And I don't know how to organize it so that I can easily access it. So do you have any kind of go-to tricks or a system that works Great for question. you? Great question. Um, I think that it helps to determine if you're a paper person or you're, or you're electronic person. Um, and sometimes you might be a little bit of both, but usually you're primarily one or the other. And I'm mostly electronic. And I learned that because I just kept papers the first many, many years in the business and I'd take notes at events and like never, ever go back to them and not use them. So I love Evernote. Um, I use Evernote a lot because I can organize it like a notebook or a filing cabinet. And so when I'm, you know, at a conference, I have a notebook. I have a whole stack of training um, notes. And in my stack, I have a notebook that'll be for that particular conference. And I can open the notebook and have different notes for different speakers and it's easy to search it. So, and I do the same, I keep my team members on there so I can keep up with their coachings and I keep my customers and my last contact with them. And it's just easy cause I can have it on my phone and go in and update it. Um, I'm not like, it's, it's a work in progress for me, the organization thing, but I've found something that helps me keep taking steps forward and it improves over time. But that's my main go-to that I love to use. The only things that I do paper are my DMO sheet of like my weekly activity. It helps me to have that on paper. Thank so. you. Yeah, and Leah, Leah, with that Evernote too, I've been trying to, I've been taking pictures of receipts and saving them. Yeah. I saw like after this last year, I had all these like paper receipts that yeah. like I was like handing in an envelope to my accountant, but in Evernote, you can like take pictures and save things in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause sometimes I do still take paper notes, but even if I do that, I can just take a picture and file it away. Thank you. I'm going to wrap this up, but then I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you so much, everybody, but hang on when we get through here. <laughs>